Hey guys, James Mason here from Our Build. Today I'm going to be giving the Flexio 585 from Wagner a bit of a test. I've got an upcoming DIY presentation I'm doing at a home garden show. I'm going to use this spray gun to finish off some reclaimed timber that I'm doing. So what you'll see in this video is the machine in action and also how I go about preparing that timber for the show. Alright, let's have a look at it. Okay, so here's the main head unit. We've got two different types of uh, sprayers, spray bottles that we can use. This is the large one which is normally for wall paint and then this is the smaller bottle which we use for uh, fr fine spraying timber work which I'll probably use today. So there you go, just clips in like that. I believe this thing's been dubbed the uh, hairdryer on steroids, so we'll see how it goes. There's no need for dilution of paint or anything like that, you can just pour it straight in and it's good to go. Now the paint we're going to be using today is actually polyurethane, it's a clear that I'm going to put over this timber down here. It's uh, going to be used just to finish it off, just to dress it up a little bit and just clear it off. Okay, so I'll put this big one away and we'll just focus on the one that's going to be used for staining the timber. Now in the pack, you'll get all the instructions. And it comes with a little stick for stirring your paint. Little instructions on how to put it in, how to wash up, how to clean up. I've read through a lot of these before, so let's get going. So one thing the kit does come with is these little uh, air filters. They're replaceable that go on the side of the machine itself. So I'll show you a close up of how you pop those in. But you just want to keep these spare, I guess. Uh, read the instructions on how often you should change them over. They've always already got air filters in them but keep those spare. To replace these air filters that go up the back here, you just take the little paint stirrer they give you, pop this into the back, and that should clip up. So you'll see there that clips open, and there's the little pad. So basically that would just be changed over at a later date. So pretty simple. That just clips back in. There you go, you're off and running again. There's one of those on each side of the machine, so that's why they give you the two filter packs. So a couple of things you'll notice on this when you first get it. When you take the uh, bottle off the bottom, inside there's a little spare part here. It's a little rubber nozzle. Now that goes inside the machine itself, so I'll break that down for you and show you how that works. You can unscrew this nozzle at the front. Inside that, is the little adjustable piece that gives it a horizontal or vertical spray. Inside that is then this little piece here. So you can probably see that a little red uh, O-ring inside there. That's what that is. That's just a replacement for that. So don't throw that away. Keep that as a spare inside your box and you're good to go. So put that back together. Pop that back on. Put the adjustment back over it. And screw on the outside face. So there's not a lot of moving parts to this that you really need to know except for that. Once that goes on, then you've got your adjustment at the front here. You can either have it as a horizontal or you spin that around and have it as a vertical. So that'll just give you a wide spray or a horizontal spray. And you can play around with that a little bit, which we'll do in a second. The other thing is this adjustment at the front here. Now you can either spin that towards the back or towards the front. Have it towards the front if you're spraying down because that's going to keep the liquid at the front of your bottle. Or if you're spraying overhead, spin it towards the back because that way the, the liquid's going to sit towards the back of the bottle. Okay, so I'll put mine forward because that's what we're going to be doing. Screw this back on. Now there's also an adjustment here on the trigger which you'll see. You can wind that either towards the uh, negative side or towards the positive side. That'll just put that little adjustment either forward or back to give it to limit the amount of spray, the amount of control that comes out. What you've also got is the air control on top here. So you've got a max and a minimum from one right through to eight. And again, that'll just be a matter of playing around with it, either adjusting it up or down, depending on the type of finish you want and what you're actually spraying. So what I recommend now is try it out first, put a little bit of water in the bottle and spray it on a bit of gyp rock or on a bit of timber and see how you, how you feel with it. You can make any adjustments that you need and then actually put the product into the machine itself. With this uh, urethane, you can see here it's sort of a bit milky on the top. Now it's recommended not to shake this, especially if you're going to put it through the spray gun, you don't want any bubbles. So what I'm going to do is just use this broad knife and just stir it up with this. Okay, 
It's got a thick creamy coat on top there, so we just want to get that all the way through it. Now ideally I'd like to spray something like this outside, just where it's a bit more open, because it's pissing down rain at the moment, we don't really have much of a chance to get outside and do that. So we're going to do it in the garage here, it's a little bit confined, but we'll give it a bit of a coat and see how we go. The main thing is to give this a little bit of a dust off, make sure there's no fine particles of dust on top of it, and then we can apply our first coat. So let's give it a go. <coughs> Okay, so it's sprayed up with the first coat, <clears throat> just nice and light to get it sealed. You see it's a little bit wide in some areas, that's because there's a little bit too much of the actual coat on there. Because it's going to dry clear, I'm not too worried about that for now. <clears throat> so I'll leave this for a couple of hours, let it dry in between coats, get about a 240 grit sandpaper, give it a light rub back, just to take that um, gritness out of the actual timber itself. What happens is the polyurethane soaks into the timber, and the little end grains stand up on edge and then it dries hard. So you just want to knock the tops of those off to make it nice and smooth. Then you apply your next coat. Do the same technique, light sand, and another coat. So we'll give it two or three or maybe even four coats just to see how nice we can sort of bring it up. I'll keep experimenting with this just to see what spray is going to be right. Whether I adjust the nozzle version, uh, whether I give it more air, less air, just to see what's going to give it the best, best finish. <coughs> so once we're done spraying the first coat, any excess that's left over, I'm just going to pour back into the tin. Now what we'll do is we'll soak some of these uh, components in water, just while we're waiting for this first coat to dry. Then when it's ready to go, put some more in, do a sand, do the next coat. What I'll do is I'll just take the nozzle and everything apart. Take off that piece, the inside piece, Spray piece there, then we'll put all that soak in water. Okay, so we've taken the 60 grit off, which is what we use to cut this timber back to give it the rusty look. And we've now got the 240 grit on, so we use this just to go to the top of this and take the rough surface off this um, timber now that's been sprayed with poly. So that's all you really need, just to rub the back. Now I'll get rid of this dust off the top, and then I can give it another coat with the spray gun. Now I'll just give it a wipe with a damp cloth, just to get the remaining excess dust off. So I'll put this out in the sun to dry for a couple of minutes. Once it's nice and dry, we'll uh, give it another coat of the poly. All right, let's give this thing another coat. on nice and thick. It looks a little bit milky until it actually dries, but again we'll wait till that dries, give another light sand back and give it a third coat, maybe even a fourth coat, depending on how glossy we want it to look. But that's come up pretty good so far. Okay, so I've done a bit of experiment with the uh, spray gun there and what I've managed to get is three or four good pieces that have been sprayed up in the poly. I've also sprayed up a couple of pieces just in white. What I'm going to do is sand that back tomorrow, try and leave a little bit of the white in the grain, and I'll do a poly finish over the top of that. So just experimenting a little bit to see what it's going to look like. I've also got some of the old salvage timber that hasn't been finished or denailed yet still there. So over the course of the next couple of days, I'll play around with a few bits and pieces, I'll see what I can come up with, and we'll start making some furniture.